you so much for being here. What a pleasure. I hope that you find this video interesting. Personally, I am relieved that more than 12 months have passed and I am finally just going to intervene with my Balanopsis Ptolemy experiment. I wanted to bring the other compadre along because both of these little Balanopsis were keikis from the mother plants, which are doing fabulous in their setup of Leka and self-watering. So Maximilian gave me a keiki and this is the little keiki that I put into self-watering and Leka. This is the little keiki from the mother plant called Walter. And I decided to test it out with Colomy. Walter Jr. was actually in Lekka and self-watering to begin with. And then I thought, well, I've got this Colomy lying around. Let's give it a goo. And well, <clears throat> this little guy had to really, really fight for survival. Only in the last four months did I intervene by putting fertilizer into the water that is always supposed to be at the base until it dries out and then you fill it up just a tad, like a centimeter or two on the base, according to the instructions of Colomy. Colomy supposedly has nutrients that last for five years, there are no air holes, and everything is supposed to look really cool because Colomy comes in many, many different colors. So the whole aspect and the presentation is supposed to look beautiful and remarkable for at least five years and your orchid is supposed to thrive. You decide. I am not biased. I'm just showing you. Make up your own mind what you think of this. Yes, I like to have everything in white. The purpose of having a transparent pot is so that you can see the different colors of Colomy taking effect and making a decorative presentation. Um, yeah, I don't think this is pretty at all. And you can see by the comparison of my little Maximilian Jr. in the pot with self-watering, who is doing better. I've got more roots coming out of this pot than Medusa. And for the first time, it is growing its first brand new leaf away from the mother plant, which took a very, very long time but the activity in the pot is probably similar to the activity outside of the pot. And I'm really pleased with the progress of this little guy. And it's also going to try and do something at, excuse me, roots at the base here. So we'll watch and observe. If that wants to be a flower spike, I'm gonna let it bloom because this would be its first attempt at a flower spike. And that is a good sign because it's happy when it wants to bloom, when it's ready and feels it has enough energy. Perfect, we like that. By contrast, this little one here has tried to bloom over and over and over again. Look at all these flower spikes here. One, two, three. And then there's one tucked back in here, four. Those are stress flower spikes. That means the orchid isn't happy. She's fighting for survival. And that is why she's trying to push flower spikes in order to get pollinated and survive. That is not a good sign for any orchid if it is struggling and is too weak to bloom. The reason it is exerting so much energy into producing flower spikes is because it's about to die. However, in recent weeks, I'm seeing a second little leaf coming out here right now. So it's probably got the message. I don't want you to bloom. I want you to produce vegetative growth and now I'm going to go in. I'm going to see what is in this pot. How bad is the root system in there? And if there's anything that I can salvage, and then I'll make my decision whether I'm going to put it into Lekka and self-watering. Probably feasible because whatever roots down here are viable, they are actually used to a very wet environment. I have my self-watering pot and microfiber and everything prepared here off screen. But let's go in. Let's have a look. Let's save Walter Jr. So I want to be very clear. I followed the instructions of Colomy to a T, literally to a T, to the point that this leaf was showing signs of malnutrition, lack of nitrogen, according to Michael McCarthy. So that's why I started to add some fertilized water in the bottom and it's greened up again. So probably the reason it's pushing out a second spike is because finally it got something to eat. So anyway, let's get it out. 
Colomy has been super, super good for me with regards to my desert plant. Let me get a... Okay, it didn't smell bad in there at all, but still. But for my desert plants, it's been fabulous. It's worked really well. I'm not gonna throw this away. I'll see what I can clean up and then I'm gonna save it and see how we go from there and what I'm going to use. Now, the roots in the pot, this is algae. Doesn't feel squishy one bit. This one clearly stopped growing, as did this one back here. But I'm happy to say that I have a root tip right here, which it's going straight into Lekka and self-watering. I don't have any dead roots. Is this dead up here or just dry? No, it's just, it just looks brown, but it's not dead. So this one's alive, they're all alive. Thank goodness, thank goodness, there is no death on the root front. That is fantastic news, but I can tell you that what you see here in comparison to the little Maximilian that we just saw, that is not good progress after a year at all. So I'm glad that I have tested this. I have done my due diligence with this product. And I'm sorry for anybody that wanted to get Colomy and thought it was pretty. Let me tell you, it is very, very pretty, all the different colors, but it is absolutely useless for growing according to their instructions. Absolutely useless. Let's get little Walter into a self-watering pot with Lekka. And seeing as it is a keiki, I am going to be using small Lekka keiki. Even though this orchid, if it makes it, will one day be as big as the mother plant, definitely not a mini fell at all. But because it is a keiki, it is a seedling, it's a baby. We're going with small Lekka because they like a lot of moisture. And this one definitely needs to get its mojo going. And I think we can take care of that straight away with the size of the Lekka. Let's hope I didn't put too much Lekka in there. Let me make sure I don't get water into the crown. I'm still having some great warm temperatures, but I don't want to push it. I don't want to push it with this one. It is weak as it is. So I'm just going to remove some of the Lekka because it's far too much. I have water in the pot because I want to make sure that the Lekka falls gently into the root gaps everywhere, very, very gently. I don't want any bashing of the velamen. I want this root in the Lekka, so I'm going to take out more. Now, I'm not concerned about the roots being so low in the pot with my self-watering setup because those roots have been more accustomed to water based on how colony functions with that one, two centimeter of water in the pot at all times until it dries out. That's why I don't mind if there's no lecker at all at the base of this pot. Just want to make sure if I can get her somewhat centered just for the aesthetic purposes, but I don't want to crack any roots. This little root may or may not be in the media, but we shall see. She's already quite high from what I can see and the Roots are actually touching the bottom of the inner pot. You see how easy the lecker falls into position, just rolls into place, filling the gaps. This doesn't just work for large rooted orchids. This works for fine rooted orchids. Little jiggle with a finger and everything falls into place. Now, before I go stabbing around blindly, I'm going to put my tag in already. This way I have a good visual of where the roots are. I'm going to leave a little bit of water at the base, not fertilized at this point in time. I do want to make sure that the Lekka stays clean on the surface because I don't want any mineral buildup at this point in time. Actually, never at all, ever. But I do want to make sure that she has enough humidity from the base, that she doesn't feel like much has changed, but a lot more humidity around the roots. And I will fill up 
a little bit more lacquer across the surface right here. I'm just going to predict that that root is going to come crawling out over the top, but that's fine. I have plenty of roots in the pot. And if she will need a repot and a repositioning come 12 months, that is fantastic news. I would be very, very happy to see that because at this point in time, I have to honestly say that Colomy, according to their instructions, based on what they claim, it does not work. The only reason this orchid actually came to this point is because Michael McCarthy said to me, she is lacking nitrogen and that is why the leaf was starting to go yellow. It had a burnt look to it, but it wasn't burnt. The moment I added some fertilizer, just a hundred parts per million, she started to pick up and started to grow this little leaf. And that to me is a sign. I'm sorry, Colomy, but your thing about five years, no nutrition. I have managed to hold off 12 months, if not a little bit more following your instructions. And I almost lost my orchid. Your product is beautiful, it's pretty, it's aesthetically pleasing, but it is definitely not suitable for growing any kind of orchids unless you want to use it as a filler for aeration. That is my conclusion with regards to Colomy. Let's hope that Walter Jr. forgives me and that we will hopefully see a beautiful, healthy new little leaf coming out. And in long term, both Maximilian Jr. and Walter Jr. can be happy little orchids in my collection. Hope you found this interesting. 12 months later, here we are. My conclusion, follow me, is snake oil. Really appreciate your time, your company, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.